What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering another Swift keyword related to concurrency, and that is sendable. Sendable was recently introduced with the new async await paradigms, and it's not covered very often, so figured it was about time we dug into it. So that all said, start by dropping a like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, you guys know the drill, and let's get into sendable. Now, before we actually write out an example here, let me actually just create a struct at least. Let's talk about what problem Sendable solves for us. Well, the problem is pretty simple. For those of you familiar with basic concurrent uh, operations, you know that there's a pretty interesting thread safety problem in any programming language, especially iOS. Two threads, in our case, two dispatch queues, uh, potentially updating the same value. This can result in things like race conditions. This can result in things like weird crashes. And Sendable basically allows us to tell the compiler that something is thread safe to be used across multiple concurrent domains, aka multiple dispatch queues, so on and so forth. If you're not familiar with concurrency or the, the primer of it at least, I encourage you to check out my earlier videos on it. But now that we know what Sendable does, let's see how we can actually use it. So I'm just going to write a comment here. Sendable uh, ensures, ensures concurrent safety. Now, first and foremost, Sendable is actually already provided by Swift's standard library for a lot of types under the hood. For example, if we go ahead and try to extend int with the Sendable protocol, and I should mention Sendable is indeed a protocol, you'll see we're not going to get yelled at by anything. In fact, we're going to get a warning and say that, hey, int is already Sendable. And such also applies for several other primitive and base types like string, double, float, so on and so forth. The same can be said about implicit conformance on a value type, aka a struct. If we go inside here and we create a value, and this value type is an integer, very similar to how we can implicitly make things codable, this is actually already implicitly sendable. And the reason it's implicitly sendable is because this struct uh, inside it already has a uh, or only has a property, which is an integer, which in it of itself is sendable. Now, what happens if we make this a class? Things start to get a little more interesting. And you'll see it as soon as the error pops up. So our error is going to yell at us about a whole bunch of things. So first and foremost, it's saying store property value without initial value previously synthesized. So this is yelling at me that we don't have a constructor. So let me actually give that one, two, three. But you'll see in terms of sendable, we still have an error here. And there's going to be a couple errors that we'll talk through them. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do here is uh, talk through an enum case. So let's say we wanted to make an enum thread safe such that we can access it from any different queue and we can guarantee thread safety. You might be wondering, well, let's have, let's say, a flight object. And in here, we might have something like United, which is a uh, flight carrier for those of you not in the US. And let's say we have a, I don't know, some number in here, which is maybe the plane number. And then perhaps we have something else, which is, um, let's call this uh, Delta, and then we'll potentially have a name. And this is going to be perhaps an NS attributed uh, string. Now, if we go ahead and try to conform to sendable on this, we're gonna get an error. And before we see the error, it'd be cool if you guys wanted to guess what the error is gonna be in regards to. Well, the error is actually going to be in regards to this thing, ns attributed string. Well, why is an ns attributed string sendable? The reason is, is because this ns attributed string class is a class and it's a reference type. And reference type have to be annotated as sendable explicitly. There's some requirements that they need to fulfill. And there's also something known as unchecked sendable. And we're going to cover both of them uh, right now. So let's go ahead and do that. So first and foremost, we want a initializer for this value. So in here, we're going to say init value. And we're going to attempt to spell things correctly. We're going to say self dot value is value just like that. And you see, we still have an error here. And the reason we have an error is because we need this class to be final. 
And once we go ahead and make this class final, we should see this error go away. Now, why does it need to be final? So the final keyword for a quick refresher uh, ensures that no other class in your object can subclass this class. So this cannot be the super class of anything else. So we created a person. It's not like we can create Joe, who is a person. We're gonna get yelled at about this because this class up here is final. And the reason that this is enforced is because uh, sendable needs to guarantee thread safety and if you are going to subclass something there is a potential case there where you can be changing your super classes properties and various characteristics about it and that introduces an edge case where thread safety cannot be guaranteed now one common question and something i didn't touch on is well why the heck is this called sendable because that doesn't imply thread safety or concurrent safety uh, in any way, shape, or form. The reason it's marked sendable is it can be sent across different concurrent domains with that safety in mind. And this really ties into async await. When you are running multiple operations, whether they're async and you're waiting on an API call, or maybe you're reading from core data, there needs to be a guarantee that whatever objects you're passing back and forth, and uh, I'll add that functions are included in that too, functions can be sendable too, AKA closures that I'll cover in a separate video, you need guarantees that these functions and these objects being passed around are not gonna randomly crash your app for some concurrent race condition needs. So this is again a primer to sendable, so keep that as a, as a thought in the back of your mind. So now that we see the class here is sendable, there's one weird thing that's going on here. This uh, class is immutable, and that's by design. So I have this unchecked sendable up here. I'm gonna move this down here. It's important to understand that we can conform to sendable here as a final class because every property within it is immutable, AKA it can't change. So immutable class reference type, right? And now down here, we're gonna have something a little different. In this case, we're gonna have a mutable class, which will also be a reference type, but there's gonna be one different thing here. So let's go ahead and create another class. We'll say this class is a final class company and we're going to have a private var in here and it's going to be the name of the company and we're going to have once again a constructor so we'll go ahead and say name is a name like so and we'll say self.name is name but in addition to this we're going to have an update function now our update function here is simply going to take in a new name and this new name will have the same type of a string and inside of here we're going to go ahead and say self dot name is new name now let's go ahead and make this sendable and see what happens so we're going to make this sendable and let's wait a second to see if we get an error we in fact do get an error if you look at the actual error the reason it's saying is store property name of sendable conforming class company is mutable well that kind of makes sense, duh, because we, ha we have a var here, it's not a constant, but what's the problem? Well, I would recommend to Apple to throw a more useful error, but the problem is we need to tell the compiler that, hey, while this thing is sendable, we're guaranteeing by some internal mechanism to this class that we have thread safety. And the way we do that is by further annotating this unchecked. And unchecked sendable, we'll see that this error will go away. However, this is a little uh, little bit of a gray area, and this could potentially be dangerous. And the reason for that is, is you've told the compiler, hey, you can count on me to be thread safe. But right now, we really truly aren't thread safe. Now, to actually improve the thread safety of this, we want to synchronize on a particular queue. So let's say inside here, we create a queue and we call this our update queue, or maybe we'll just call it queue. And this is going to be a dispatch queue like that with a label and maybe we'll go ahead and say uh, company update just like that and now inside of this function where we actually go ahead and update said name we're going to go ahead and say q.sync which is going to synchronize this call we're going to then update the name property to the new name that is passed in and that'll actually guarantee synchronization uh, regardless of where we are getting this call from because we're being synchronized in terms of the update of the name property on this queue. This is a queue where that work actually runs concurrently, rather serially, uh, because it is synchronized. 
And that is how you guarantee that, hey, this class is mutable, aka we can change stuff, but it is still sendable. Now, again, if you got rid of this unchecked, it's gonna yell at you again because the compiler looks at this and says, hey, you have vars in here and you've got some other stuff in here too. And I don't know that that's thread safe. So you explicitly say, hey, this is unchecked sendable. Don't check it at, uh, you know, at the time of compile. At runtime, we have mechanisms in place to actually perform synchronization of whatever thing is being mutated in here, AKA the name property. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Once again, functions are sendable as well, but I wanna pause here since this video will end up being very long if I go down that rabbit hole. Two takeaways here, Sendable is already present on almost all of the base types within the standard library, things like strings and integers and floats and doubles. And value types are implicitly sendable if their properties are sendable within themselves, similar to codable. Reference types need to be declared as final, so they can't be subclassed. And if they are mutating, if there are mutating members in that sendable object, you also need to tell the compiler not to check it, AKA the unchecked annotation, and you need to guarantee synchronization and thread safety yourself. So that is sendable in a nutshell. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Leave a comment to let me know if you've used Sendable, if you're familiar, and if you have any suggestions of what you guys want to see. Hit that bell icon to stay up to date as I post new videos. Connect on LinkedIn, Twitter, DM, follow on Instagram, all the socials if you guys want to stay connected. I'll see you guys in the next one.